Yes, it has. Hi, good morning, everyone. David's about to check in with Andrea Mitchell in Cuba. And as Cubans start the second of what will be nine days of mourning, we're looking at how those on the island nations are reacting to Castro's death. And this is Andrea Mitchell traveled to Havana overnight. She joins us live from the island nation. Andrea, good morning to you. I'm curious, what is reaction there as you've uh, been talking to Cubans? You know, on that point, Andrea, I know talking to Cubans down there, that they, they hold this cautious optimism about change, and we hear so much about change. But when we look at U.S. policy with Cuba, we've seen where things have changed in the past two years. What is your sense of, of what's going to be happening next post Fidel Castro? Andrea Mitchell joining us live from Havana, Cuba. Andrea, thank you so much. Fidel Castro's death left many Cuban Americans we spoke with conflicted. Some call him a dictator, others remembering him as a figure who once stood for hope. The news bringing back painful memories for a lot of Cuban Americans who live in our area. I need some time. What am I taking with me? Guys? How much time do I have? Mercedes Diaz Bash, who you heard from just there, was just nine when she was separated from her family. Her parents sent her and her sister to Miami. They came through what was called the Peter Pan mission. Mercedes went through foster care before she was able to finally reunite with her parents. And News 4 has made several trips to Cuba in the past two years. We've taken you along with us. Given my family's roots on the island nation, I've become familiar with a few of the significant places where tributes will be paid to Castro. And thanks to our coverage, we can show you some of those spots this morning. I want to point out this spot right here. This is where the first major gathering is going to happen. This is in Havana, Cuba, the country's capital. On Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, Cubans are going to gather at La Plaza de la Revolución. It's the Revolutionary Square. And around it are several statues and figures of some of the revolutionary so-called heroes, like Che Guevara and Camilo Cienfuegos. From there, the cremated remains of Fidel will be taken across the country. And this gives you an idea of how big Cuba is. It would be the eighth largest state if it were part of the U.S. It'll be a three-day trip. It's how long it's going to take to go from Havana in the west 
to Santiago de Cuba in the east. Fidel will be buried at a cemetery, the one you're looking at right there in Santiago de Cuba. It's the same cemetery where famed Cuban revolutionary Jose Martí is also buried. Well, Elian Gonzalez was the Cuban boy who was found floating on an inner tube off the Florida coast in 1999. His mother and other Cubans were trying to get to the United States from the island, and he was the only survivor and eventually returned to his father and grandparents in Cuba. Well, now, almost 23 years old, Elian is mourning Castro's death. This was an interview on Cuban State TV that aired yesterday. Speaking in Spanish, he said he wanted Fidel to be proud of him and that he saw Castro as a father figure. He said Fidel even attended his elementary school graduation. At 9.08, as you return to work from the holiday break, we want to give you a heads up if you're planning to take Metro. The next safe track surge is going to ramp up tomorrow, happening on the orange and silver lines. Until December 21st, trains are going to single track between West Falls Church and East Falls Church. Trains are going to be running every 20 minutes. Today, of course, is the Sunday after Thanksgiving, the second busiest travel day of the year. We're talking about nearly 49 million people who traveled for the holidays, trying to find their way back home in time for work and school tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, if you can think about it already. News for Derek Ward is live in Laurel, Maryland, with what travelers should keep in mind. Hey, Derek, good morning. Thank you. Okay, 140 next. Hey guys, we'll check in with you. Be able to chit chat during hey, the commercial break, which is coming up. A lot to talk about. We will, <laughs> we will chat. Sundays are always a little crazy. Hi, Steve and Rodrigo. Good to see you. Is that John Townsend? He's so nice. Okay, everybody, uh, we're in a package about holiday travel right now. We'd love if you could group share. I'm going to go ahead and do that myself. There we go. Love for you to tell us what you uh, think of when you think of Sunday morning. We need to let Larry know, huh? Oh, yeah. Because we only have nine shares. That's not going to work. We're only on for 30 minutes, by the way, today. Not on air, but on oh, our live feed. Oh, because it'll kick out? Yeah, it kicks out, so... So now's your chance. Okay. Drive safe Sunday. Why is it just stuck on me? All right, thank you, Derek. 910 right now. A beautiful shot of National Harbor there as we take a live look outside on this November Sunday. A good day, maybe, to get out and continue that holiday shopping or pick out your Christmas tree. Tom's breaking down the forecast for you when we come back, so don't go away. And when we come back, we're also going to have the latest on the desperate search for a missing boy. You're watching News for Today. That is such a sad story. It's so sad. Do we only have Andrea once in the show? Yeah, she's, she's I think, um, slammed down there. She's got MS. Did she do nightly? Did she make in time for nightly last night? They did it from uh, Miami, so I think they were still okay. en route to get I there. I hurt my shoulder. So, everybody, we were just asking, what's Sunday morning mean to you? I saw that as one of the trending topics in the D.C. area, Sunday morning, people just talking about their Sunday morning. What, so, well, and it's why. Sunday after Thanksgiving, so. Well, yeah, it's, it's extra special. Get this. So, Tom's going to join us for the weather here shortly, but there's going to be a high of 68 coming up in this next week, he said. 68. A warm-up, but also it looks like uh, we're getting much-needed rain. I think, what did he say, Tuesday? <clears throat> okay, I need to log on. Okay, guys, 31 shares. Let's double it. If Ryan you haven't shared it, and his family in Columbus. Oh, yay. He went home for the holidays. Hello, Ryan. Ryan and all the Lintelmen. Ryan, we're airing our Smithsonian, our second Smithsonian piece That's today. That's right. It looked really good. Yeah. So thank you for that. 
right, I've, got a, I've got a share. Hey, Mercedes is here, and Mercedes is actually in our newscast. Mercedes, we just, uh, uh, did we hear you from you already? Yeah, we just heard Sunday's from you. Sunday's renewal, I already. like that. Already, it was great, great Coming interview. In. Okay, I need to share. Zoo lights, um, we'll probably shoot zoo lights, but uh, that is the big, beautiful holiday light display at the National Zoo. Do you want to tell you, if you are out in the Northern Virginia area, Roar's Zoofari, which was formerly the Ruston Zoo, they have the Chinese Lantern Festival going on through Christmas. Is this things that go up in the air? Well, it looks not like Tangled, not like Rapunzel-like, like floating lanterns. How but, did you know that was my reference? Yeah, because I just could see it. But these are, if you go to my blog, you can actually see one of the, it's not lit up, obviously, it's in the daytime, it's a dragon. Mm -hmm. It was a float in the Ruston Parade. They are doing a Chinese Lantern Festival. So you go oh, in wow. at night, they're all lit up. It is absolutely breathtaking. I haven't seen anything like it around the area. I need to see that. Thank you for sharing. Work out hard, Brian. Four autopsies are scheduled for tomorrow. This is after Fairbanks, Alaska police investigated a murder-suicide. They say that this happened in a room at this hotel that you're looking at on Friday. The hotel staff called police after they found a man crying in a hallway there. Police say that the man is a family member of the victims who was not there at the time of the shooting. He directed them towards the bodies. Police say preliminary evidence points to a 22-year-old man as the gunman. There's still no known motive. A tragic story here. Investigators say there is no sign of foul play in the death of a nine-year-old boy who was on the autism spectrum. Pearland, Texas police say the body of Marcus McGee was found in a pond yesterday morning. He was former NBA player Marcus Candy's nephew. Family reported him missing on Thanksgiving afternoon during the family celebration on Candy's property. The police lieutenant says the boy's family is thankful for the community's help despite the tragic end. His family had traveled to Texas from Connecticut for the holiday. Recent terror attacks have raised concerns about Americans becoming radicalized. The problem is that it's not happening in war zones, but online. NBC's Ronan Farrow has an exclusive look at how one tech giant is trying to fight back. He's trying to switch this up. This is an interesting story this too. The reason I can't get it to frame up good like I want not it framing to. up well? Yeah. Let me turn this, because I don't like this there. So. Hey, Elaine, good morning. Did we let Larry know? Because this is good weird. Good morning, guys. Nobody's... I need to share it on mine, too. Oh. We've got about 15 minutes left in the live broadcast. And is that because it kicks you out, Angie? Huh? Or are you just doing that? What? It's only 30. Oh, gosh. Is it already? It's jumping on its own again. I hate it when it does this. Thank you, Naomi. I need to share, too. Yeah. Having issues Director with this Naomi today. shared. Not sure why. David, good morning. I well, we do want to, oh, and my battery's dead. Everything is Brian, working against us. good morning. Got everybody in stuck here. stuck on morning. me? It's a I don't know what's doing this, guys. Sorry. It's what like you, moving on its own. What are you doing over there? I don't know. It's like trying to give me an extreme close-up. We've seen this story, but it is enlightening. Also, we have another story, and this is on the TSA, and how people who did not sign for sign up for pre-check or do pay the fee, do the background check, the fingerprints, right. are ending up in the pre-check line randomly because they're choosing them to you, lighten You have pre-check. I do, and I have, I have it through global, and global entry. entry, too. Yeah. So, and we've seen um, some of the people who don't normally go through it, and they, the, the concern is that it slows down the line. Well, it does because they don't know that they don't have to take the off process. their shoes. Yeah. And all that stuff. But plus... I mean, I guess it's comforting, though, that they bring the bomb-sniffing dogs around whenever they send people that haven't been checked for TSA pre-check. Right. So that's good. Brian likes your tie. Thanks, Brian. Oh, wow, Nicole. Clearbrook Park near Winchester, she said, is another great light display. I have not seen that one. I passed the Bull Run one on the way in the other day. Gary had... Thanksgiving dinner at 10 p.m. 10 p.m.? Wow. That's like a Spanish Thanksgiving dinner. That's like almost breakfast. Like for me, because I get up so early, but... Breakfast. 
Luis, good morning. Hello. It's not limited to 30 minutes. I haven't figured it out yet, but with the Nevo camera, with this It'll one, cut off. it cuts us off at 30 Did you check yeah. your... Does that have anything to do with the storage mount? Maybe. Should I use that card? We should try it, man. I, I have know. the card back there. We'll try it. Your time is 918. Let's get a check on the rest of your weekend forecast with Tom Kieran. We'll do that in just a moment. So I hurt my arm. Just the weather. Oh, he's coming to the set. Oh, good. So Tom's so coming no to the set. So no 302, right? So we will uh, frame Tom up and, and get him so in on the action. 302 goes away. We come back with just weather. Oh, wow, Chip. That's good to know. Also, another great place, Meadowlark Gardens in Vienna. Oh, my gosh. There, light, they turn it into a winter light wonderland. And mm. then you can get hot chocolate right after. It's really great. Hot um, chocolate. Wally, thank you. That's so kind. We love our viewers. Oh, Persita goes past the Bull Run Light Spectacle. It's pretty oh, good. cool. Larry it's pretty cool shared. to see it. Okay. I shared twice. You did? You shared twice. Now you're spamming people. By the way, for those of you who logged on yesterday during our experiment, I'm so sorry for like spamming you with our live I, Facebook did Live. Did you see Bob's shout out behind her? She thought I posted it on Instagram. He and, thought you were talking to his friend Bob. No, David. David. He has sorry. a friend named David, David in class. And she was talking to me or trying and to get so me. So I didn't Facebook. realize I had set up how to train the dragon to distract the Bob so he wouldn't interfere Which with our Facebook Which I love the Facebook theme music live. in the background. Yeah, it was in the background <laughs> playing that in my washing machine. Sorry. Right. And then sure enough, I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to beam in David. And then all of a sudden I see this head pop up behind me. And it's like, your David. friend David? Like he, he thought it was you. So. And then when he found out it was not Oh my his goodness, David, we have company. Like, Done with who, is this, who is this stranger? Oh, Stranger danger. Tom Kirine. <laughs> Tom, I told them about the warm-up that's on the way. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big deal. We'll take 60s in late November. Yeah. That's kind of, is that normal? I can't remember. No, no, that. average high is like low 50s now. Oh my gosh, and then much needed rain, hopefully. Yes, yes, it's been so dry. <sighs> yes. Da can you say hi to uh, Director Naomi's, Naomi's friend Dan? Friend Dan, Dan is on. Dan the man. Hi to Naomi's friend Dan the man. You know what that just made me think of? The Dan band. Anybody know the Dan band? Is that Steely Dan? Turn around. No, he, I think they were in The Hangover at, no, oh. Wedding Crashers. Oh, I know the, I love The Hangover. That movie was so funny. They do parodies of songs. Oh, absolutely I, hilarious. I saw them at the 930 Club. When he was looking for his missing tooth. Zach, Zach Yeah, Galvin Jim's praying for rain. <clears throat> Hi, Robert. All right, so the talk right now on our Facebook Live is about the holiday, uh, holiday light displays that folks can catch out and about. Mm -hmm. And they're also saying that there's people actually talking about the weather saying, Tom, we need the rain. Yes, and I'm also hearing jingle bells. People are going to be uh, heading out to uh, find a Christmas tree today. That's right. That's, yeah. A lot of people doing that and good weather for it. As we are starting off cold this morning, certainly feeling wintry cold. You do need to layer up. There is the view from our Storm Team 4 tower camera overlooking northwest Washington. And we've got a beautiful blue sky overhead there at the Christmas tree farm today. It will be sunny. Temperatures by mid-afternoon right around 50 oh, degrees it? with a light oh, breeze. And oh, then more night tonight, we'll have start. increasing clouds, but we'll stay dry. Hey, Troy. Travel weather Sam, today. Right now, we're well. covering yeah. in the low to mid-40s around much of the region. Oh, right the national now at 46. And no rain or snow on Storm Team 4 radar now. And up and down the Atlantic seaboard, no travel problems. It's a few snow showers upstate New York. Increasing clouds in the Midwest. Maybe a few flight delays in Denver, as well as Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, as there is a coastal storm coming in there. But to driving, shouldn't have any trouble. Then heading off to work and school tomorrow morning by 8 a.m. We'll be in the low 30s in the suburbs and rural areas, upper 30s in the metro area. A little sun tomorrow morning, then cloudy the rest of the day for your lunch hour on Monday. We'll be in the low 50s, hitting mid 50s mid-afternoon. Low 50s again by late afternoon. So uh, staying dry, but then that much needed rain coming in on Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, temperatures all the way into the mid 60s. This tan zone, though, this is the moderate drought zone. Elsewhere, we're abnormally dry. And since September 1st, 
At National Airport, we're over six inches below average for rainfall. Another area of rain moving in on Wednesday, highs in the upper 60s, and then we get chilly on the first day of December on Thursday, highs in the 50s to near 60 with some sunshine, and then dry as we get into next weekend with highs in the low 50s, and that's the way it looks. Good job. Did you say good job? Yeah. Isn't it nice to have that? Yeah. After, well, we can do a pause after each one, too. Yeah. I, I need to have <laughs> my positive reinforcement from Angie <laughs> every day. You're looking good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> good job. Can I you you get a you? sticker today. Okay, Did thank you. you. <laughs> Hold on, Angie. I want to show them a picture. What do you want to show them? A picture of what you what you do so that they can see the behind the scenes. Oh gosh, my crazy! Can they see this? Um, eh. glary. Let me see it. Just glary. It's a good picture. It is glary. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering if they can see it. Let me see. What she does to get the behind the scenes look for you all. It is a little like um, what do you call it? I don't know. Smoky or whatever you call it. Wait, it's probably greasy. <laughs> greasy. My face. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to get Tom into the shot. Are you? Are you gonna come join me over here? No. Oh, reset. Reset. What? Your mm. camera is really funny. The original. I think I messed it up. What? Sorry. Julio. 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 Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Another David. I'm Another just... David. Is it Bob's friend, David? I know, right? There you go. Did you... Now I can show it? Now you can show it. How do I do it? I had to make the color a little better. Oh, so brighten it up. Yeah, okay. I hope we don't lose you guys, but... Hold on, let I'm me zoom in. Right now. I'm trying to zoom in. I'm trying to work my magic. So that's me behind the scenes. I don't think they can see it very well, but... It's all right. Okay, you're, you're pretty good. You can There's see it? There's a delay on your phone, so. Oh, so they've already seen it? Yeah, I think so. Or they're about to see it. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, four, oh, yeah. Three. That's Angie. Did you change the shot already? So you might be losing you in six minutes. It's not that I like to. But. I held that up for a long time. Well, thank you, W. Brian Sadler. That's so nice of you. What happened? Straight Go up ahead. the sound? Okay. Cool. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we were asking what we love about Sunday morning. It is a special time of the week. It is nice. Oh, that 20% battery remaining. They call me. Oh, a story that's coming up in the 10 o'clock hour. The hottest holiday toys. We're here till 10 o'clock. 10 30. My friend, welcome to Sunday. <sighs> Welcome. Welcome to my life. It's a life. privilege to be here to attend with you. Sunday <laughs> morning. Saturday Can I quote you, Naomi? A little bit earlier. Ooh, this is the mannequin challenge. Watch this on TV, guys. I sent this in. Did you do it? No, but Barbara Harrison did it on hers. She, she did, did it, it at Thanksgiving dinner. Barbara Harrison's face with pink. Oh, we could have mentioned that. We get healthy people. Yeah, it's pretty good. So it's going to be after the sports. Uh, so it is a mannequin challenge that has been done since 1784. What? And I know we're seeing a lot of them, but I think this one's pretty good. What'd you do? I don't know. I'm trying to... I'm getting too happy with this thing. We will. Well, the mannequin challenge continues to sweep the nation. Huh. Now even the Army's official ceremonial unit is getting in on the fun. The 3rd Infantry, known as wow. the Old Guard. I know they really look like mannequins here. Posted its own version on YouTube. 
These are the same soldiers who also escort the president. It goes on for minute by minute by oh, that's minute. That's really cool. So many different scenes. Um, they have the rifle team. These are the, the people who take care of the, the soldiers that take care of the horses um, that perform. And if you've ever seen it in person, it's a pretty impressive set. I mean, that guy didn't even look real. No, it looks like a wax museum. Yeah. So that I believe really they, cool. they've been doing this since the 1700s, they tell me. <laughs> without without the uh, cell phone video, of course. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> State Police did one, too. That's pretty neat. And you said Barbara Harrison did one? Barbara Harrison, if you go to her Facebook page, she I did one for it. Thanksgiving dinner. It was good. I'll have to check that out. All right. A lot more to get to on this Sunday morning. Talking about a few new outlet malls opening up in our area. Looks like there will be some good weather for your holiday shopping. We'll check in with Tom Kieran about a potential warm-up. And reaction still mixed around the world as Cuba mourns the death of Fidel Castro. We're going to tell you whose message is sending shockwaves across the globe. Have you been kicked out yet? <laughs> I think we're still with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh, the memes were ridiculous, Naomi. Ridiculous. What are you looking at? Oh, are you reading? Yeah, I'm reading, reading what folks are saying. Okay. Gary uh, Did they watch likes it? it. Did they see it? Mohsin says that we should not be focused on Facebook Live during our bulletins. Do you know what? Our bulletins? What are our bulletins? Here's what I'll say about that, because at first I wasn't too comfortable with you know, yeah. trying to do that. Uh, journalism started in coffee houses and bars. It started as dialogue. It was conversation. Mm -hmm. For many years, it became an anchor talking to a muted audience. That conversation was lost. I think now with social media, we're returning to conversation. We're returning to dialogue. We're returning to what are the roots of mm -hmm. journalism. Yeah. So in many ways, I feel like this is, and you guys often bring things to our attention yeah. that we haven't yet seen. So, I mean, while we're and very much focused and, and look at our stack of reading for mm -hmm. this morning, Absolutely. We're very much uh, in tune with what's going on, but conversation is very important, too. That's all I have to say about Yeah, that. no, that's your thing. No, some people are open to it. Some people are not. Some people see it as a tool. Others see it as entertainment. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm one of those people that says I see it as the future, and I think that more and more things are going to be going this way from yeah. the way you get your news to the way you get your advertisements to the way you communicate with your family and your children. Right. And it's just going to be um, something that you can't escape. Yeah. I agree. Oh, yeah. Right side? You know, I didn't brush my hair before I came on this time. I didn't have time. Um, Thank you, guys. A lot of folks, uh, you can perfectly, you know, feel that way, and, and I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I get where people think. You know, that's why preparation like, goes into your shows. You know what you're doing. Um, and trust me, there's times, that, and those of you who are with us every week know, if, when there's a big breaking situation, we can't engage right. as much. But, um, but I've gotten story ideas. I've gotten tips. I've gotten corrections through Facebook Live. Amen. That's important. Those are all important. The value outweighs the negatives, in my opinion. It's 9.30 on this Sunday morning. Cuba has begun nine days of mourning for former President Fidel Castro. The leader of the Cuban Revolution died Friday night at the age of 90. We're going to take a look at what's next following his death. See Pleasant police searching for a man who they say shot at them following a car chase and armed robbery. Two other suspects were arrested, including the driver of the getaway car who had a gunshot injury, according to police. Hillary Clinton's campaign says it will back Jill Stein's recount effort in Wisconsin, but President-elect Donald Trump is slamming the effort and says the nation needs to focus on the future. And we welcome you back in on this Sunday morning, November 27th. Adam Tuss enjoying the morning off with family. I'm David Colton. And I'm Angie Goff. Hope that you are waking up with your family, maybe some friends, have them over for breakfast this morning, yeah. going out for a nice run. Whatever you're doing, we hope you're enjoying it. We do want to let you know about the weather and some changes that are on the way. Yeah, for that, we'll head over to Storm Team 4 meteorologist Tom Kieran. How's it looking, Tom? Five oh one, right? 
Joseph, that's Wreaths Across America, it says December 17th. That's a really great event. to check in with the event. At 9.33 on this Sunday morning, we now return to the death of Fidel Castro. Right now, the country is starting its second of what will be nine days of mourning. The leader of the 1959 Cuban Revolution died Friday night at the age of 90 on the island nation. Some people have been looking for comfort inside of churches, as you see here. We know that many public events were called off, many businesses shutting down. Funeral plans call for Castro's ashes to travel across the island that will happen after a public gathering Tuesday night in this spot here. This is Havana's Plaza de la Revolución, the Revolutionary Square, essentially. His ashes will then be buried on December 4th in the island's second largest city, that is Santiago de Cuba. And around the world, folks are remembering Fidel Castro. To some, he was a hero of the Cuban people. To others, a tyrant. A vigil was held last night in Paris to honor the leader of the revolution. The group gathered in front of the statue of Latin American independence leader Simón Bolívar. And in Madrid, Spain, there was a verbal confrontation between Castro supporters and detractors. The tensions erupted at the Cuban embassy. That's where dozens of people were gathered. We'll show you that scene right there. Police eventually had to step in and calm the matters. In Latin America, Castro supporters in Buenos Aires left messages on the gates of the Cuban embassy. And Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau weighing in, offering his condolences while speaking at a summit in Madagascar. That response getting a lot of reaction on social media this morning. Meantime, in the Middle East, as you're looking at right here, Palestinians also mourning Fidel Castro's death. The late Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat visited Cuba back in 1974. And we're going to be discussing a lot more reaction from political leaders, including right here in the U.S. We're going to be chatting with Meet the Press moderator Chuck Todd. That's coming up just a short time from now. In the meantime, you can read the latest and see some of our recent coverage down in Cuba. We've made five trips there over the past year and a half. All you have to do is search Castro in our NBC Washington app. Well, the world's largest firefighting aircraft is working to battle some raging fires in Israel. Take a look. Yesterday, the U.S. Boeing supertanker was called in to extinguish flames that broke out last week near Jerusalem. The plane can carry 75 tons of fire retardant. Investigators think that arson is to blame for the spreading of this fire. Now, when it comes to ride-sharing services, things like Uber and Lyft, you might wonder which one is safer. Well, it turns out there is a difference. Listen to this. Both companies do do background checks, but Lyft goes a little bit further, doing things like an in-person interview and car inspections. One driver who works for both companies likes that. Well, but it appears neither company requires drivers to take care of those automobile recalls. On average, 20% of drivers don't bother to fix the problematic part. And riders, just a tip, be sure to compare the driver's picture and make of car to the app before you open that door and get in. Some good advice there. NBC4 is working for you, responding to a dent dilemma. So a Maryland woman paid extra for a dent and ding policy when she bought her new car. But when she needed to cash in on it, the claim was denied. That's when she turned to News 4 consumer reporter Susan Hogan for help. This is a great the story, magic too. Maker. Uh, Susan Hogan, if you ever have a consumer issue, you have to contact our team. We've been able to help so many different people, um, and she's always open to, to anything. Yeah. Uh, okay, real quick, I do want to do this because, Joseph, um, you're reminding everybody about December 6th. December 6th, the Fort Myer blood drive. My question was, in order to get on the post, don't you have to have a military ID? Is it just with people independents that have ID access that can get on base and um, 
donate blood. Can you share that information? Because we definitely want to help out. Mm -hmm. Not sure yet if I can make it. I'm, I'm trying to work my schedule out. Chris, Wally, Wally likes your Spanish. Great to see you. Thank you. I need, um, I left my charger at my desk and I'm at 10% battery. I'm happy that the Wi-Fi has lasted longer, but we might be losing some juice. So unless we can get the... Um, my, my, my wireless won't sit on that. I don't know why it, it, it died already. I mean, I had You're it doing an awesome job with this new camera. This is looking really good. I think if I was doing it every day, I'd be a little bit smoother. You yeah. think that they have time to grab my... Uh... By the way, new mug. New mug, people. Let's see if I can show it. I don't know if it'll show up. It might be hard to see, but it has the family and then it has the kiddos. Yeah, what's up? Tom McGee, Naomi says hello. Director Naomi, she's in my ear. She says it's great to have you on. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Um, Ron, Gary, Brianna. Hmm. And if you have any questions about Lyft, ask Gary Nelson on our feed because he drives. Oh, that's right. That's right. Anita, he's 12. <laughs> he's like a prodigy. I'm 15. Come on. Yeah, uh, Anita, my mother is Cuban. Um, before this dies on me, group share. Tierra. Hi, Doreen. Tierra, it's been a busy stretch, but happy birthday belated. I always think about you on November uh, 25th. Can we plug my Smithsonian story and tell everybody to tune uh, in and watch Ryan's it? Ryan's on, so Ryan should be plugging this for you. It's part it's two of story. my series of going behind the scenes. Everybody talks about the dream job that Angie profiled. Ryan Lentzelman on the feed can tell you about that. It's his job. Susan Hogan, the magician, right? Yes, I, I like that title. All right, so Susan says, for these added warranties, while they may sound like a great deal, take the time to read the fine print. Make sure the list of what is covered is longer than what is not covered. Someone waking up very, very wealthy this morning. They may not even know it. That's because last night, a single Powerball ticket, just one, was sold with all the winning numbers. Ugh. And it wasn't us. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Unfortunately, that winning ticket sold in the state of Tennessee. Yeah. Lottery officials are still waiting for the winner to come forward. Whoever won will be happy to know that that jackpot is worth $421 million. There was speculation on our Facebook Live that the reason Tuss is not here is yeah. he cashed in. He has a connection to Tennessee. Right. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You don't want to miss this. It was so fun to film. When we come back, I am going to take you on a very special behind-the-scenes tour of the Smithsonian. Don't miss it. All righty then. Okay. Well, Anita, we love you watching. Oh my goodness, how much uh, how much battery we got? What's the juice situation? Did you um, lower how the, much the juice? mode? I, I'm scared to touch it because it'll cut the, what, the what, live out. Oh, the shedding. yeah, don't touch that. Um, don't touch it. We still have enough juice to keep going. I know we're all sad, but I feel like a lot of lottery winners come out of Herndon in Fairfax County. Sometimes it's like a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's a lot. I'd be happy. You say that because in fact, 50. I went to a Herndon store, I'm like a locally you. owned store, and yeah. they had three lottery winners in the past few years. Yeah. I All need the time. to start. Two hundred fifty thousand. Wow, Director Naomi. How much did they get out of the two hundred fifty thousand? Naomi's friends. You probably get a hundred thousand after taxes and a cash payout, that's right? Bad. Whose birthday, Gabby? That's cool. Hi, Brian. Gabby, happy birthday to you. Oh, I don't have my clapper. What happened to my clapper? It's I took it from you. Yeah, I was abusing for it. For obvious reasons. Was I, was I abusing it? No. Oh, I did have the clapper. Are you talking about, I'm not talking about the light, but I will tell yeah, you, Tiara, we will. if you're looking for an awesome gift, my, everybody in my family has it now, and I see the infomercials because I'm up when nobody else is, but it's that, that uh, the doorbell. What doorbell? The doorbell. You don't have a doorbell? 
that the ring? Yeah, no, it's where you can be anywhere in the world. I guess, uh, you got that? Yeah. yeah. So I'm sitting there, and my dad's like phone's going off. I'm like, what? He's like, oh, FedEx guy at the house. I'm like, how did you have that? They ring the doorbell. It's a video camera. So it sees it, and it notifies you every time somebody comes to your door. On your phone, you see it? Yes. Yeah. It's like a nanny cam on your phone. Like my nanny cam that I can pull up I anywhere. Can talk to them too. You know, that would be a nightmare on Halloween, I'm just going to say. It was, that, it was Halloween that happened. Well, this I is a fun story. story. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, talking about millions of artifacts in the Smithsonian Museum's vast collection. We just don't have enough space, right, to show it all, score of them, not on display. That's because they have millions and millions. I was able to uncover a huge effort, though, to share these rarely seen items with the rest of the world. Here's my behind-the-scenes look at the National Museum of American History. I had to get Indiana Jones in there. I know you did. I know. Sorry. No, yeah, I know. I we push the limits sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, yeah, I was about to say, yes, we raise your blood pressure. Um, no. Rob, uh, my friend Michael Thomas on I Street. Wow, Joey's friend won a million in Sterling. Don't distract them, my, sh sorry, my sorry. story's Sorry, sorry, watch your story. I told Ryan, you better, the TV. Ryan better be watching. <laughs> so. They're talking about all these people that won lottery. Chip says he would get lost in that storage place. Yes, very easily. And there's there's six of those just for the Museum of Nav uh, American History. There's Indies. The Gremlin. It's inside a crate. That's a Carol Burnett's charwoman costume behind her and Phyllis Diller's outfit to the right. Oh, wow. And what's really funny is that Phyllis Diller always performed with this long cigarette. So I looked at it. It's wooden. She never smoked. It was just part of her shit. You know, she was... Did smoke come out of it? That was used as tools for... Thank you. They, um... Fang! Her, yeah, Fang. So they used those tools for the Revolution of War, you know, obviously for medical reasons, but also for exorcisms. Revolutionary? Mm-hmm. Coca-Cola first started as a medicine, and then it became a sweet drink. So they'd have these at phar pharmacies. Yeah, Dr. Pepper also, yeah. Hey, that's you. I like the little lockers. Rob, you're funny. Have. The what? The little lockers that everything's kept in. Oh, yeah. In. Well, there's lockers. There's like the cold vaults. There's the warehouses. No. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph, for posting the link for the military blood drive. Hopefully some, some of us can get out there. Yes, for stuff. Shalana, thank you. And Charles is going to share. Thanks. Oh, it might have died. Has it died? No, right? You could do a whole story just on what that lab is doing. <laughs> I mean, I have all the materials. I could, you, I could do a special. Could you? Probably. I could do a 30-minute special. Do it. I'll talk to Jason. CP? There's a full special on this would be great. What is it? Director okay. Naomi's cousin in Brooklyn? What's his name? Or her? It's 
speaking of time, did not have time to get to everything in yeah, there. So but you saw clips of it, Mario Andretti's uh, Indy 500 winning car there. Yeah. I mean, there was just, everywhere you turned, there was something interesting that you bumped into. And there's more that you can see also. Um, I did two stories. They're all posted in the NBC Washington app. And it's fun stuff to, to read about and share. Yeah. And hopefully everyone will be able to see soon. Chip on our Facebook Live said he would get lost in that storage facility. It's easy to do. Thank goodness for the curators and the museum specialists. That's really cool. 9.47 your time on this Sunday. we got a lot more of news for today ahead right after this. All righty. And I cannot believe the live feed has lasted this long with this Don't new camera. Don't I know. But it's, it's more, if it cuts out, it's because of my phone. But we would like to sh a show of hands. I like how Gary's like giving the 411 on uh, I know, Gary, you're a great resource for all this. Do you think that, um, do you have any extra time? Do you have extra time? What are you talking about? Oh, not for me, not for me, not for me. Not for me. What do you want extra time for? Well, I want to see if I can get my um, charger. For your phone? Yeah, it's under my desk. Do we have Alpha here? Yeah, I do. Oh, you do. I have an outlet. Everybody loving your story. Oh, yay! Oh, they, uh, Shalana liked the uh, first artificial heart. Yes, that was cool. And, you know, the guy ended up living um, a few more days with it. He ended up, he had some really complicated uh, issues. But it did prolong, mm. I mean, it, it let him live for a few more days. So it worked. For a little bit. Yeah. Thank you, Andrea and Jim's here. A trap phone, Anthony, you're terrible. A trap phone. <laughs> By the way, um, I gotta show you my phone. What you got? Do you, are you so busy right now?